The design of the cockpit requires a lot of consideration, one of them being able to follow the standard operating procedures in a chronological order out of memory. Welcome to Flight Level 070, I am Utkarsh and today we will take a look at cockpit preparation. This video is in continuation of preliminary cockpit preparation, link is in the description below. The cockpit layout is designed so that the actions are easy to memorize and apply using the flows. I'll use the flight through operating manual as a reference and describe the flows on a PC simulator. So let's start. Welcome to the sim. The flows are divided into three sections, the overhead panel, the main instrument panel and the pedestal. Begin from the overhead panel, left, bottom to top, center, bottom to top, right, bottom to top, then making a U over the main instrument panel. On the pedestal moving left, top to bottom, center top to bottom and right top to bottom. Let's begin with the overhead panel. As per Airbus philosophy, extinguish all white lights. Moving to recorder, ground control on. Check that the parking brake is set on. Loudspeaker will consider is set off. Int switch out and minimum volume. Int rad switch to int and press the CVR test push button. The beep confirms a successful test. The captain purses switch to captain. ADRS to nav. The next exterior lights strobe to auto. Nav lights as required. If fueling is complete, the seatbelt signs on. No smoking sign on. Emergency exit light armed. Landing elevation set to auto. Probe window heat as required. Moving to air conditioning panel. Set the pack flow. Low if occupants is less than 141. High if it's really hot and otherwise normal. If APU bleed is selected on, then the pack flow is automatically set to high by the computer. Moving to elect. Select the elect page on the ECP. Turn the batteries off then on. A charge cycle is initiated. Check that the charge is less than 60 amperes after 10 seconds of setting the batteries to on. In the fuel panel, if fueling is complete, set all pumps on. Then engine fire test. Check that the buttons are in and guarded. The agent lights are out. Press and maintain the test push button. Check that the lights come on. Agent lights come on. Continuous repetitive chime. Master warning. Warning on the engine warning display. And light on the engine fire push button. Cancel the master warning. And release the push button. We'll repeat this for engine 2. Lights are on, agent light discharge and squib on. Reset the master warning, check engine 2 fire and engine fire push button. Audio switching to normal. Ventilation, all lights are off. Third ACP, PN out and volume set. And the maintenance panel, all white lights are out. Then we move to the main instrument panel. Looking at the ISIS, check the airspeed, the altitude barrow reference, set the lighting, check the DDRMI, set the clock. Preferred position will be GPS, otherwise, if there is a discrepancy, you can set to internal clock. Anti-skid nose wheel steering on. On the pedestal switch on the RMP, set the ACP as required. Weather radar check off. Cockpit door check the function. Switching check all are normal. Thrust levers idle. Both engine masters are set to off. Mode selector normal. Check for the accumulator pressure. 
ensure parking brake is set on check for the brake pressure indication check gravity gear extension is in and stored and set the ATC to standby system 1 or 2 depending on which autopilot will be used and altitude reporting to on then we begin with setting up the FMS I'll be making a separate video for the same I hope you guys enjoyed please give your inputs in the comment sections below and stay tuned for more until then take care